take the usual embargo, please, for 10.30 on Friday this evening. Any questions in uh, Spanish, we'll take just before. Hello, Pep. Hey. Um, can you bring us up to date with the injury situation to start with, please? Uh, today, uh, Bini played... Uh, he made the, the... He came back. He trained with us. He's already not fit, but uh, I think the next days he will be pay, able to, to play again. And, uh, no, the other are okay. Were you surprised at just how... Edison managed to come back and play in midweek after the injuries he picked up last week. No, I still have the stitches, uh, but uh, he made one training session before the game uh, with Xavi, and, uh, and he trained well. Of course, he played with a helmet, but uh, he was okay. He said to us, "I want to play," so that's why he was there. He's a tough guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a strong guy. Yeah. Um, what are the chances now, do you think, of maybe making some changes to the squads, maybe rotating for this game at the weekend against Watford? But all the teams who play in Europe, there are a lot of games uh, every three days. So until the, until the next international break, there are many, many games to play. And uh, we will see. We will see tonight. I will discuss the lineup with, uh, with my staff. And, but of course, there are many games. And next Wednesday is a final for us. In, Away again uh, against West Brom, uh, League and Champions League again, uh, Stamford Bridge. So there are many games. I think everybody's going to be involved in more or less minutes. Everybody's going to be involved. So is it easy enough for you then to be able to keep everybody happy in this squad, given the strength and the, the depth of the, the quality of the players you've got here? Uh, yes, but... Uh, Yes, of course. I would like to, to everybody be involved. Uh, uh, it's so important. But every game, thinking of every game, what is the best team to, to play. So we will see. Have you managed to sort out the situation with Yaya Toure yet? Yaya, is, uh, we need him. I need him and uh, the team need him. And uh, it was so important last season. It will be so important that season. So, so important. He's a part of the group. He's a... He's a guy who admire him, what he has done in his career. He's a, like an exceptional player. So now he's not in, in the last game, he was not in the squad. So, but uh, of course he's going to, to help us. Is he in the squad for this weekend? We will see. <coughs> and you talk about trying to find improvements in the team many, many times. But when you look at how well the team has started so far, what areas can the team still improve on, do you think? Last season was the same. We start good and after we go down. So that's it just in the beginning of the season. We played just four games in the Premier League. Of course, we start so good in the in the Champions League, the same last season. When we, Of course, we play at home. In that case, we play away, but there's still a lot of games to do. And we make a good thing, a real good things in, in Feyenoord, in Rotterdam. But uh, still, we have a, a good gap too. To improve. That's why it's nice, our job. Hi, Pat. Obviously, fantastic performance in midweek, coming on the on the back of the uh, the win against Liverpool. How, how easy is it to, to to find the motivation for a, a game this weekend, a relatively low-key game against Watford? Well, Watford is just two points behind us. It's uh, making an amazing start. He's in beat. He never, he didn't lose one game. Um, I was really impressed about uh, his last performance in Southampton, where it's so difficult in the first half, he dominated completely the game. Um, uh, it's a so physical team with Ducure, uh, with a fast player, with Gray, with Richard, Richarlison, and uh, many new players, a good manager. What Silva has done in the last season in the whole city was amazing, so with the team was in the bottom, bottom of the league, and it was amazing results. And because they lost at home against Sunderland in the last period of the the season, if not, they a chance to to keep in the in the in the in the Premier League. So he's a fantastic trainer. So immediately you realize how good movement they they have. So and of course, Watford is always complicated. They are so physical team in the throw-ins, in the set pieces. Uh, they have an amazing backwards when they lose the ball. So quality in front, so it will be so demanding game, especially for 
for the game itself, for the water itself, but especially just three games, three days later, and the uh, and the trip to come back to Manchester now, travel to London, so not too many hours to the regeneration, but it's a good test. So the big teams always to have to handle that. If you want to become a good team in the next years, in the team in this year, in the next years, you have to handle that situation. So in one team, it have one week to prepare completely our game and we don't have time to prepare the game. And in that situation, we have to try to win. When that situation happen, we will be in a good path to become a, 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 a good team. Uh, just just on scoring goals, obviously scored nine goals in the last two games and against Feyenoord two came from corners. Um, how much pleasure do, do you take from something like that? You know, obviously you've seen in, uh, people like Piquet and Ramos score crucial goals for Barcelona and Real Madrid. So how much pleasure do you take from goals like that yourself? Well, I scored two, two goals or three goals in the set pieces in the Champions League is unusual in our cases, but usual I think in, uh, in many cases, but especially in our team. But it's a good. So many, many, many games open in that. So it's we play good, but I can recognize this will be it was be easier when uh, the first minute scored a goal for the set pieces. So Kevin and, and David were so smart to make the two against one because there's just one one guy in the in the in the corner. We make a two against one, and after that the cross is easier. But the mark for the opponent is more complicated, and after John make the difference. So it's uh, of course it's so important. Is, I mean, that, that, so is that something you've worked on? Because it happened twice in the game as well. Do you work a lot on corners and dead ball situations? No, we are focused. So we are, there are leagues where, where maybe you cannot be so focused on that, but uh, in Premier League it's so important. For example, tomorrow, uh, the two goals from Watford against Southampton it was after throw-ins. The first and third goal against Liverpool it was in corner because the taker, however, is so good and they are tall team. So we have to control that in that league because uh, always happen a lot of throw-ins, a lot of free kicks, a lot of corners, and if you don't control that, so it's always impossible to to take a result. So of course it's so important. Pep, you've you've played Gabriel Jesus and Sergio Aguero together recently. Strike partnership seems so rare these days. We don't see many teams play two up front. Do you, do you think they can get better and better together and that can be the difference this season in terms I of scoring see, more goals than everyone else? Yeah. Uh, of course, last season we had uh, a problem to score goals, but it was the fact more was the people who play inside surround our striker. They are players like David Silva, not Kevin De Bruyne. Like they are more playmakers. They are more talent players to assist than to score goals. And now maybe the last games or the last, even with Rush, with Leroy in the last game against against Liverpool and 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 Gabriel, they are more together, more inside. They don't play so wide than than last last season. And maybe they help our strikers to score more goals. And but I said many times they are going to play sometimes together, sometimes one, sometimes the other one. And Bournemouth don't play uh, Sergio and. Maybe one when I won maybe a lot a lot of control or because they are not in top form. Um, maybe we're going to play none of them. So we're going to see. But in the last games, of course, with the crosses to have two strikers in the box is so important. Two. And the last, the last three teams that have won the Premier League, there's been some suggestion they've done it with counter-attacking football. As someone who obviously wants your side to dominate the ball. Is it more difficult to win games the way you want to win than, than counter-attacking football, do you think? Well, it depends. If you see my history, I'll know. Because I won a lot of titles playing that way. So, and I use the counter-attack, and we use the counter-attack. The counter-attack you have to use is a strong weapon. But uh, the difference is when you decide to defend, 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 to just the counter-attack, or you may high pressing to regain the ball and make the counter attack. That is a little bit the difference between what we want to do in respect to use the counter attack. When I wait, I wait back, I stay the other team, make the game, and and uh, and wait a mistake or provoke a mistake and have to make a counter attack. So that is where it is. I think the big teams 
the biggest teams use all the weapons they, they can use, the set pieces, they can use the counter-attack in the short spaces, the bigger spaces. And when the big teams, they play against one team, when they depend 11 players' depth, has the quality to attack that situation. And of course, that is the most difficult thing because there are not the space. But uh, that is what I'm looking for, that they're working, and in the end, we were able to do that. Hi, Pep. Um, there's a lot of talk, obviously, always at City about bringing the youth players through into the first team. Um, you managed to keep Tozin in the summer. Sancho went to Dortmund. Now Real Madrid are interested in Brahim. How important is it to you and to City to keep Brahim, even from clubs like Real Madrid? Well, we want him. But today the market is the market and the wishes for the clubs. Maybe we cannot control it. I, found, I, I, I know because we have spoke with him many times, the commitment for that guy to be from Brahim in that case to stay here, to play in Manchester City, because Manchester City gave him the opportunity to to start to compete in a high level. He grew up, his family is happy here, but we never know. We're going to try, of course, to hear him, because he has to know, even in Madrid, even Dortmund, here in the top level teams, the top teams, it's not easy to play. But of course, at the end, decide his uh, performance on the pitch. Um, so with the market as it is, as it is at the moment, he, do you think it's harder to keep hold of young players like, like Foden as well? No, it depends. It depends, uh, it depends uh, of, uh, I would say, it depends of the, of the design of the player. Uh, because, of course, in the, in the huge talent players, the club, Manchester City, like I think the other clubs with the young talents, they make the effort to, to kick him in terms of salary, in terms of contract. So, of course, when City, he made absolutely everything again. Jason, uh, Jaden Sancho will do with Phil, will do with uh, with Abraham, with the players we have. We did it with uh, with Tosin. So, w of course, we we wanna we want that players stay with us, but we never know. Sorry, just the last one. So, if if Madrid made a good push for Brahim and Brahim was thinking about going, he obviously signed a new contract recently. Do you think City would offer him maybe new terms? And I don't know. So I don't know because I know many many clubs here the manager control these kind of things. Mm -hmm. So, but I'm not involved in that. So I give my opinion about about uh, that players could be interesting to stay. We would like to stay, but after that, Chiki Ferran and the people who is in board, they they take decisions about the use the contract, the deals, and and speak with the managers. A la mañana se ha publicado uh, aquel día que la teva sortida de al Bayern es va producir por un desacuerdo amb la política de fichajes del club. Uh, no sé qué em pensas que en em partir. ¿Puedo responder en inglés? Sí, sí, por sí. ningún problema. Ok. Um, yeah, in, in, in Munich, in, in Munich, Germany, say that I was leave from Munich for disagreement about uh, with the board. And, uh, and I don't know why the people say that, because it's, uh, it's totally... It's totally false, so I was so happy working with that club. Um, always I would be grateful to Rummenigge and Uli Hones gave me the opportunity to be trained in one of the best clubs in the world. The reason why I move on is because I had the pleasure to come in England to, to train here. So all the, the transfer market we did it, we did the, there, it was always a commitment with the, with the, with the board. So I don't know the club by Munich is so special and take a decision. So we make a big meetings and after that they take a decision. I was completely agree on all the decisions. They say that maybe Sané uh, were interested in Leroy and Leroy was not interested in my period there. And in Kevin De Bruyne too and Kevin we were not uh, Bayern Munich don't pay a huge sum of money to buy Kevin was not able to do that. So all all, all we have done there was always a big agreement with uh, with uh, with uh, with Bayern Munich uh, uh, bosses, so it was a pleasure to be there. I have an apartment there, so always will be. I have a lot of friends there, and uh, when I wish deep of my with the bottom of my heart is uh, is support Carlo, and uh, their fantastic players that they have, and I am pretty sure Bayern Munich, like always, will make a, a, a magnificent season for them. So I have a lot of friends there in Bayern Munich, and uh, and uh, nothing would say it is it's true. Okay, guys, we're in the embargo, please, for 10.30.